We have a lot of news to tell you about tonight because we're following some breaking news on Jacksonville's west side where an officer was shot around 435 this afternoon at the corner of Old Middleburg Road and Buttercup Street. We have live team coverage. Brittany Dion is standing by at U of Health where that officer is being treated. And we start with Jason Rantala where JSO has given us an update on the shooting just moments ago. That's right, just a half an hour ago, JSO briefed us right here. You can actually see the squad cars here down the scene. Now, what we learned in this briefing is that this is the same suspect that's wanted in a robbery at Wells Fargo and the Atlantic Coast Credit Union. Now, this all started when officers observed the suspect in, a, in the vehicle used for the robberies. They say he got out of that vehicle, got into a silver vehicle with a white female. That female later fled. There was a short two-mile pursuit. The canine officer who was shot was the lead vehicle in that pursuit. Now the K-9 officer called over the radio that shots had been fired and then there were reported multiple bullet strikes. That K-9 vehicle received bullet strikes on the windshield and the front vendor, the front uh, fender rather. Now the pursuit was terminated. Police say they don't know it's either with a crash or some peaceful officer intervention they're saying near Buttercup and Old Middleburg Road. Now the suspect stepped out of the car. The shooting ensued when the shooting was happened. Uh, the officer was, received a bullet strike to the chin. We also learned that he was transported. Right now, he, we know that he uh, is having a hard time speaking, but he is speaking. As that pursuit was unfolding, the K-9 officer came up on the radio and said that shots were being fired. There were multiple bullet strikes to the K-9 vehicle, to his windshield, and to the front fender area. And we've also learned that the suspect in this incident, I apologize, there's a lot of noise going around, going on around here. The suspect in this incident was also transported to the hospital. He was pronounced dead. We have not really learned the details as far as how he died. We've also learned that the canine dog in this case was unharmed. We're expecting another press conference later on this evening. JSO said they will keep us updated when that will happen. We're going to send it over now to Brittany Dion. Oh, that's right, Jason. We're outside of UF Health where the officer is inside being treated for that gunshot wound to the chin. Now, earlier this afternoon, JSO was asking the community for prayers for this officer. It appears those prayers certainly worked. JSO says that this officer is blessed this evening. The officer is able to speak, although it is tough for this officer, but the officer again is able to speak. It is uh, he is alert. He is speaking to the people around him. We are uh, told that he may likely have to have surgery as well. And as you heard my colleagues say, the dog in this incident was not harmed, even though the dog was in the car. The dog was not hurt. The suspect was also brought here to UF Health. The suspect was uh, pronounced dead earlier this afternoon. But again, the officer is expected to make a recovery from all of this. Of course, we'll keep you updated on his condition. We'll send it over now to Hani Rodriguez with more information from neighbors in that area. Hani. Hey, Brittany, we're actually on Old Middleburg Road North, and a lot of people are still trying to get home. Of course, everyone is worried about that officer praying for him, but still it was rush hour traffic. And there was a lot of cars backed up on Old Middleburg Road. And I want to show you where I'm actually standing, which is where this command center is for JSO. Down that road is where uh, that is closer to the scene. That is where Buttercup Street is. We've seen plenty, more than a dozen uh, JSO crime units, undercover investigators heading that way. They are still redirecting traffic on this road. As you can see, cars are traveling north on Middleburg Road and making a right turn because they are not allowed to get through that uh, JSO officer patrol car that is parked right there on the road. And we spoke to a woman earlier who had her seven month old in the car. She actually told me that she lives on Buttercup Street where that shooting took place earlier today. And um, she says it's not a safe neighborhood. Take a listen. Lately, pretty drug filled and prostitutes. It's getting pretty bad in this area. So you, it's not a safe neighborhood? It's not, not anymore. Again, this woman that we spoke with earlier telling us that she is not at all surprised that something like this would happen. Uh, she did give us her heartfelt uh, feelings towards this officer who of course is uh, recovering in the hospital. 
So we are going to keep you informed. I know that JSO is going to brief the media one more time, hopefully uh, earlier this evening, and we'll make sure to bring those details back to you in the studio. All right, honey, thank you so much. Our team coverage continues right now. Julia Dreyer spoke to a witness from the scene and she joins us live in the studio. Julia? Jessica, after that JSO briefing just about 30 minutes ago, we're getting a better context as to what this woman saw. She says around 4.30 this afternoon, she lives on the Lambing Road. She says she saw a silver car speeding down the street, being followed by two JSO officers, one of them in an SUV, one of them in a police cruiser. She estimates they were going about 60 miles per hour down what she calls a very residential street. At one point, they turned back around, came back up the street, Street and missed her by only about a foot or so. Now that woman told me she saw a woman driving the car and saw a man in the passenger seat and that lines up with exactly what JSO said about 30 minutes ago. They say that that bank robbery suspect was originally driving a car tied to those bank robberies, but at some point he got out of the car, got into a silver car being driven by the woman and that's where this police chase happened. Now looking back on it, this woman didn't know what was happening at the time. She says she didn't hear gunshots, but now knowing what happens, Here's what she had to say. Oh, we didn't know. Me, my neighbor was out there too. We were like, oh my God, why are they chasing him? We immediately thought drugs. We didn't hear any, any of the gunshots or anything. So they were not firing while they were right here. And that woman again says she lives on Lambing Road, which is near Old Middleburg Road. Pol JSO says that the chase was about two miles in length, so they have a lot of people to talk to about this. But this woman says there were actually people in the road at the time, her neighbors. And she says, again, this car was flying. She estimates about 60 miles per hour down this residential road. So Jessica, she said, could have been a lot worse. And now looking back on it, she knows exactly what happened. All right, Julia Dreyer there in the newsroom for us. I'm here with First Coast News crime analyst Mark Bachman. And Juliet mentioned that we know that this probably was a bank robbery suspect and that JSO had probably been looking for him for some time. So let's talk about that. Yeah, it, definitely. I mean, they, I think they had the information and intelligence identification and description of the vehicle and the suspect based upon some robberies that were uh, committed by this individual days prior. Uh, maybe a week prior, and um, they may not have known about the female uh, uh, being in, in the car, but however, there was one at the time. So they had good actionable information they, they had to move on and go on. May have spotted them during a routine patrol or gotten actionable information given to them from a citizen, and then they picked up on them, and then, then the pursuit entailed. And so we understand the officer who was uh, shot in the face by the suspect, he's an officer with the K-9 unit, and he was actually the first in this pursuit of the suspect. Is that That's, unusual or is that normal? No, it just it just depends on how they picked up on it. Uh, it's not unusual. I mean, it's uh, it's possible they put him up front or got him to the front because he had the dog. Uh, and once uh, the suspect spotted him, they took him off in a high speed pursuit. Uh, and now and now, you know, you're chasing an individual hoping that they'll surrender. All right, Mark Bachman, our First Coast News crime analyst. And thank you for putting this all into perspective for us. Jessica, I'm going to go ahead and uh, send it back to you now. Okay, Anthony, thank you so much. And of course, for the latest information on this particular case, uh, we want to remind you that you can go to our website, firstcoastnews.com. We will continue to be updating it as we learn more information.